They got Joe as bodyguard. What are they gonna do next? Go! What is up, Bengals fam? It's your boy Mike coming back at you with another Who Daily. And turns out I was right all along. You guys just had to chill out last week. They were gonna sign Collins. Uh, Leo Collins signed with the Bengals in a deal that essentially works out to what he was getting paid in Dallas. The, 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 uh, the Bengals called the the Cowboys bluff uh, and said, you know what, I don't think, I think that we can sign him for basically what you're paying him on the free market, and we're not going to send you a draft pick in order to get him because we think we can get him in free agency. And they were right. The gamble, the gamble paid off. The Bengals signed him to a three-year, thirty million dollar contract, which you know averages out to ten a year. That that third year is essentially a void year. It's um, it's put on there to distribute the cap hit out uh, into the future. Uh, so uh, we'll see what the Bengals end up doing uh, with that third year. Uh, all the you know all signs would indicate that if it, if Leo Collins works out in Cincinnati, it'll be uh, they'll, they'll talk extension. Um, but for right now, they got their guy, uh, and, and Leo Collins had this to say about it. You know, I told him, uh, you know, he asked me say, you know, deal done with a lot of question marks, and I was like, uh, yeah, I say your new bodyguards in town, nobody's touching me, and I'm just looking forward to. Uh, getting in this locker room with the guys and, and, and showing them the type of pro that I am, the type of person that I am, and the type of teammate that, that I'm going to be. And, you know, just, just earning the trust and respect of these guys that's, that's been here before me and obviously wearing that, that legendary 71. Um, you know, re represent one of the best, Willie Anderson, all-time great. So I'm just excited to go ahead and carry on that torch. You know, that's an indication. Like, I, he, he's a man of his word. Check out some of these blocks some of the stuff that he's got going on. Uh, this is why P Bengals fans are excited. This is why Frank Pollock called him a glass eater. This is why, uh, you know, this is why he uh, it was so sought after by by the Bengals and a few other teams. By the way, it's not like the Bengals were just uh, paying for a guy nobody else wanted. Uh, but Leo Collins, come on down. The Bengals are now literally one piece away on the offensive line uh, at uh, at right guard uh, from being having this thing completely uh, over I'm sorry left guard having this thing completely overhauled um, and at the end of the day they're gonna I think what they're gonna end up doing I've been telling you guys this from the beginning of the season what they're gonna what they're gonna do is fix the offensive line in the in free agency in the offseason and then they're gonna draft for defense that's what they're gonna do that's what I, I mean I'm, you guys can act uh, surprised by all this all you want but I've been trying to tell you that's gonna be the plan if they go anything but all, anything but defense and more than likely corner or safety uh, or um, if a defensive interior player slides down to them at 31 that they really like, they'll take that. Um, edge may be a little bit farther down on the list just because they've, they've got Trey Hendrickson under contract. They've got Joseph Osai. Um, they've got Sam Hubbard. Um, and I think they feel pretty good about Cam Sample and, and some of the rotational pieces they have. That doesn't mean they won't draft an edge player. They absolutely can and, and might because – what do I always say? You can never have too many pass rushers. Uh, that's part of that group of key players, the pass rusher that, that, that every team needs in order to compete. You got to have a dude, you got to have a group of guys that are going to go get the quarterback on the ground before he can deliver the ball. So, um, but like I've been saying, you know, uh, I think they're going to go, I think they're going to going into free agency uh, or they're going into the draft this year looking, putting themselves in a spot to go BPA, but I, th I think that they're looking at defense realistically. And I mean, unless there's a huge slip of one of these offensive linemen that they really like, you know, one of these top 15 type tackles that they have a grade on slides all the way to 31. Sure, they had, sure, but that's that's going to be if it, that's only if he's BPA, right? That's the whole point of BPA is whoever's there that's the highest on your board, take him. Um, look out for them, by the way. Uh, before the seasons, uh, before the off seasons over, they're still going to sign. They're not going to go sign Taron Armstead or one of the top tackles of it left available, or even top interior offensive lineman available. What they're going to do is go sign veterans to plug to to compete for that uh, other guard spot and for backup uh, and for depth in case of injury along this offensive line. So I really expect them to take, to, to take a really hard look at bringing Quentin Spain back. Um, Quentin Spain's already familiar. Um, they gave him their, his shot after he got cut by the Bills. Um, so, yes, yeah, Quentin Spain's Q's going to go out there and, and, and look for his money. He's going to test free agency. But I think at the end of the day, if he 
decides the Bengals are the best place for him to be, I think they'll have a spot for him at the right money. So, uh, and that could end up being, you know, Quentin Spain could end up being your starting guard, uh, starting left guard or right guard, and bump uh, Kappa over. Uh, to the other guard spot, but that's why you sign guys with flexibility. Uh, that's why you sign guys that can play uh, other positions. So I think that's what they're going to end up doing. Um, I wanted to go ahead and take a look with you guys, though. Uh, what I think they're going to like, let's look at some of the options they have. Uh, let's look at some of the options they have in free agency from a cornerback who's remaining on the market, a cornerback uh, who's remaining on the cornerback market here. Obviously, I'm going to. You guys know my thoughts on this. They usually don't they don't sign free agents over 30, no matter what position it is. So I'm just going to go ahead and rule out a lot of these players. Even though I think Stephon Gilmore could play till he's 35 probably, but the Bengals just don't dish out that kind of money for uh, for guys on the wrong on the wrong side of 30. So if you take a look through here, this is the PFF ranking of the available free agent corners uh, still left. Yeah, the Bengals already Bengals already signed back Eli Apple, so maybe PFFs. Uh, you know, not maybe their free agency tracker here is not up to date. Either way, uh, you know, I don't think Casey Hayward's in in, in the the uh, discussion. Steven Nelson has taken a nosedive from a production standpoint, and he's almost thirty. I really don't see that being a, in play. Uh, Traverius Ward is a really interesting one. It, it it would be kind of funny after what Jamar Chase did, Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase did to him in the in the two games that they played this year. But um, this could be an interesting move, you know. Like he he fits all of the kind of check mo- check uh, check boxes. Uh, he would be a a depth corner. He's not coming in to be a starter, you know. Javarius Ward, you could you could make the make the argument that Eli Apple's better than he is, but. Uh, he is only 26 years old, so that, that that's a, uh, an interesting spot to look at. DJ Reed is another interesting one, but he is more of like a Darius Phillips type player, uh, just to put him at, just to put it in reference to a Bengal that you guys might might remember. Um, five foot, he's only five foot nine. He's a zone type slot player, uh, so not you know, not really, probably not going to be a lot of heat around him from a Bengals perspective. Um, Bryce Callahan, probably not. You know, again, over 30. No on Jackrabbit Jenkins. No on uh, Robert Alford. Patrick Peterson's 150 years old. Same with Joe Hayden. So you get, you're looking through here, and this is what I'm trying to tell you guys. There, it may be guys along the lines of uh, Akello Witherspoon. You know, he's 27 years old. Uh, he's only going to he's only gonna get they're, – they're projecting him to sign a one-year $4 million deal. Deal that's right along the pay, pay grade that the Bengals want to uh, want to pay. So yeah, just wanted to run you guys through some options here. Take a look at uh, you, you guys see on my mock drafts. I think uh, they're going to be looking at corner in the first round. I think Kyir Elam slides there a lot, but uh, you know it just depends on uh, if the guy slides down. It could be Andrew Booth. I, although I think Andrew Booth Jr. is you know out of Clemson. I think he's probably the third best corner in this draft, and he'll probably get drafted in the top twenty. If not, you know, that could be another interesting option. There's a guy, Jalen Petrie, that I've talked about on the channel who, who would be more of like a strong safety type type player. Um, but he's pretty good in, in, in slot coverage as well. He was kind of a he was kind of a move defensive back in the Baylor defense. He would play it kind of all over the field, um, but played quite a bit of safety out of necessity for, for the Baylor Bears. So um, if you take a look at kind of what the Bengals – uh, off season. Look, I, I think they're executing maybe maybe the best off season, and definitely the best stretch of free uh, free agency periods and off seasons uh, over the last well in, in the Zach Taylor era. Under you can say this kind of with certainty now. Uh, now that we have three years of an example's worth, the Bengals are treat are are attacking free agency under Zach Taylor in ways that they never did in the past. They never they never went directly after the the top some of the you know some of the the top tier players at the positions of need that they have, which they did. They went and got two of the best guards that were available on the market. They went and got one of the top uh, right tackles available in the market, mean nasty dude uh, coming in to protect Joe Burrow, giving him some attitude on that line to match Quentin Spain's nastiness if they bring him back. Um, but you see this he, you see this stuff on social media guys don't believe it the stuff where they're going to go sign like Taron Armstead to play left tackle and bump Jonah Williams into guard that is not happening guys Jonah Williams is their left uh left tackle of 
for now and into the future. They're not looking to replace him or do anything like that. So I uh, wanted to take a look at maybe what, what we come down the pipe here. Uh, they're going to switch over to, uh, at this point, they're going to switch on, from, from a free agency perspective, they're going to switch over uh, to the defense and start uh, – signing a lot of depth players they've got a lot of spots to fill on this defense they got to sign a couple more defensive tackles they've got to sign maybe one more edge rusher they're going to sign a corner and probably a safety or two before the end of uh you know before the before we even get into talking about who they're going to draft they're going to do all of those things but uh when that happens you can be sure to get the news and analysis right here on who daily every single weekday throughout throughout the week leading up to the season and until next time guys i've been mike this has been who daily see ya